Hey right, everyone, hope you're well. So I'm looking a little bit burnt because uh, yesterday I was out collecting things to do a video and I got a little bit too cremated. <laughs> so uh, feeling a little bit sore today. Anyway, so today we are doing a Brewing with Bredges video because I want to and uh, it should be quite fun because we're going to be making a Groot. Yes, not from Guardians of the Galaxy, the tree de dude, but um, we're actually going to be making a beer that is flavoured without hops. That is basically a Groot, though, yeah, the terminology, if you go further back in history, a Groot is basically anything. You can replace any part of the beer with something else, and that makes a Groot, which is pretty handy. <laughs> so, what I'm going to be using to make our Groot is this. It is dark spray malt. Now, it is a 1.1 pound or 500 gram bag. It's a couple of quid, perfect for making a gallon batch. Now, I did think about using an actual beer kit and taking some out and making it that way, but if this doesn't work, I don't want to waste 25 liters of beer. Kind of makes sense. Plus, beer kits already contain hops, and uh, the idea of this is not to use hops. So, that's why I'm using it. Works perfectly. So 500 grams, if it ferments to dryness, is about 5.5%. So we're looking, hopefully, considering all the, the yeast we're going to be using, which I'll get to in a second, um, should be around 4.8%. I'm guessing. Probably correct me. You never know. It could ferment to dryness, and it will be 55 who knows? Now, I have got this. I'll put a little picture up. This is actually fresh live yeast that I got from my local corner shop. They actually got some in. And uh, I bought it because... Ah, this smells yeasty, obviously, but it also smells beery, like a malty smell. I think this could have come from uh, one of the local breweries. Not sure, but any bread yeast would do, but that's the yeast we're going to be using. I have a one gallon, five litre water container, because that's how we roll here. Pick it up at the shop. And for my flavouring, because as a lot of you know, citrus is my favourite thing in the world, I've got loads of lemons. Uh, these were, yeah, they need using. And then I picked up an extra one because I love it. So we're going to be using the lemon zest and the idea is to mix it all together and try and make something lemony and beery. Fantastic! So <laughs> I've talked enough, let's make Groot. So the first step that we've got to do in making this is to actually zest the lemons. I'm not going to be using the juice, I am just literally using the tasty zest on the outside. Now at the minute nothing needs to be sterilized. Our container is actually already sterilized. It's one of the reasons why I use these. We can use the water in here and, well, it's, it's a sealed container. The first use is sterile. It's good to go. Makes everything a lot easier. I have wiped the side down using flash antibacterial stuff. Seems to be pretty good. It's not bleach, but I had that on hand, so that's what I used. So, going to go ahead and zest all these lemons. Uh, I won't bore you with the, the zesting, so I'll, I'll see you in a few. So our lemons are zested. Now, I had five lemons in total, but if you get normal sized lemons, as in these bigger ones, um, just use three, just in case this does work, because I don't know, I've never done this. It just, I'm inspired by a drink, a beer that I tried in Malta called uh, Chisk. I do believe that's how it's pronounced. And it was a really lemony beer. It tasted like lemons, didn't really taste like hops. So I was like, oh, well, this group could be fantastic. Or it could be a failure, hence why the small amount. Anyway, so that is the hardest bit done. Next, we're on to uh, this part. Now this is already sterilized, but it is not gonna fit in the lemon and the malt without tipping over. And plus it's filled right to the top. So I am going to take crack this baby open and I'm going to pour out one litre ish there we go now I'm going to take my kettle because even though these lemons have been washed they're not sterilized and might as well go the extra step and I'm just gonna pour in just a couple of cups worth 
because we can always add more water back in, but we can't really take the water out because it will be mixed with this multi goodness. So off I go and boil the kettle. So the kettle's boiled, we've got a lemon, and I have a clean vessel to put it in that can handle boiling water. Now it doesn't need to be sterile because the boiling water is going to sterilize it and it's going to release these zesty flavors. Mm, add this in. And there we go. It's not really necessary to do this, but uh, better safe than sorry. So in goes a lemon jus and the hot water and it's extracting all of that lemony goodness. So I'm going to set it to one side and I'm going to leave it for about 10 minutes. So see you in 10 minutes. So I've left it for about 10 minutes and um, well, lemon is oily, as you would expect, and there is sort of like an oily rim around the outside. But it smells really good. I like lemon, what can I say? Now it's given me plenty of time to sterilize my hydrometer, and uh, I also sterilized a funnel as well. The funnel I did with boiling water, because well, it's plastic and it doesn't matter. The hydrometer I ster uh, sterilized with bleach, uh, because adding boiling water to a sealed glass tube not such a good idea. So let's put this all together. It's pretty, uh, it's going to be pretty straightforward. So, uh, yeah, let's do it this way. Why not? We've got this. Now pour in our jus. I'm even going to add in the bits in there as well. Okay. Maybe I won't add the bits in there. Looks like I'm not adding the bits in there. I'm not going to force them in. There we go. And now, the most difficult part, adding in our malt extract. So I'm just going to cut the edge. And let's pour it in. Or pour it everywhere. There we go. So all of our malt powder is in, apart from this tiny bit which I left. Mmm. Oh, that tastes good. Multi, who would have guessed? So I'm going to lock the lid on and I'm now going to shake the bejesus out of it. Because uh, you don't want it lumpy. Right, so I finished shaking it, went and washed my hands. I know how you guys get a bit worried about that. And uh, yeah, it's sort of, it's dark and it's got a... A head could be good. I've never actually seen anyone brew this on its own, so I'm interested to see. So before we take a hydrometer reading, we're gonna top this up. Since my kettle has been sterilized through boiling, I have got some cold water in here and I am just gonna top this up. There we go and I'm gonna stop it right around there since this was filled right to the top. So I'm going to give this a couple of minutes for the foam to die down after I give it another little swirl. And uh, we'll come back and we'll take a hydrometer reading and see what it says. So it's been about 20 minutes just to let the foam die down and in the center it's pretty much clear so we can take our hydrometer and get a decent reading. <sighs> Open this bad boy up. All right, let's chuck it in. Just give it a second. Oh, not bad. So according to a hydrometer, it's roughly reading about 6%, which is... Oh, let me pull that out. So it is roughly 1.040, roughly. Let's give it a taste. Well, that's quite nice. It's sort of malty. It's kind of, it's got a bit of lemon in there. Mm. Hopefully that will, uh, the flavors will infuse it. Be nice and citrusy. It's got a nice dark color to it as well. So let us take some of our yeast. Let's just open this up. Cling film, my nemesis. Ah, it's okay. I'll be bagging it anyway. And uh, no need to pre-do everything because it's already done. Even comes in little blocks, so I'm literally just gonna chuck it in. Now, put the lid on, 
just pop it down and turn it a literally one eighth of a turn. So it just bites. There we go. So it's just biting, but still loose. That will let the gas escape and uh, no bugs can get in. So that's just done. All we've got to do is leave this for about two weeks. We don't need to add any nutrient to it. There should be some inside of the old malt extract. And if not, the yeast can ferment up to about 5%. No problems. So uh, I'm interested to see how this is going to turn out. Is this actually uh, beer yeast or is it? I have no idea. Who knows? So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to check out some of the other ones and well, you know, subscribe and comment, do all those things that YouTubers tell you. But most importantly, carry on homebrewing. See you later.